Why is it that two people who said they could not get away from the presence of each other yesterday now say they cannot stand to be in the presence of each other today? Why? Because one day they stopped saying. And when you stop saying with the passage of time, what you stop saying will die. If you stop telling your children, I love you. I don't understand. The politicians know it. I don't know why Christians won't learn it. It's a biblical principle. When you ask a politician someone that he wants to die, do you think it's every question they ask the president he answers? Do you think he's a fool by being selective at the one he responds to? Because the one he responds to is the one he wants to give life to. Because whatever you say, words are the gas for life. Whatever you say, you give life to. So I want to beg you. It is not the news or the thought or the statistic or what's on CNN or uh, the real estate market or the stock market. That's not what will bring you down. It is what you say in response to that that will bring you down. Are you listening to me? When Satan plants a thought of hopelessness in your mind, and you ignorantly or disobediently give voice to that, you have empowered the enemy over your destiny. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. I can never understand people. I am diabetic. What do you mean you are diabetic? No, no, no. What, what do you mean? You, because you see, as long as you keep on saying I am, you will be. Praise the Lord. I'm not denying the fact that you went to the doctor and your blood sugar is high. But it is not what the doctor said. That makes who you are. He's not your maker. So why should you allow him. To define your destiny to you. You've got to be the prophet over your own life. So what do you mean you are diabetic? I am hypertension. And you say it. And you say it. And you say, and let me tell you something. Your words, your, your emotions, and your life. And, and the Bible says the lines fall unto me in pleasant places. So the occurrences, the, the, the things, the, the happenings, the events of my life, they are all designed to respond to my words. So when the doctor checks your blood sugar and it's high, that's just the enemy because he wants to. You know that's the enemy. You know that's not you. Because he came and took away your diseases. Are we intelligent people? Can we think? But when you say, and doctors say, oh, you know, you are diabetic. You ought to say, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Not you, doctor, but the devil is. I respect you, Mr. Miss, Miss Lady MD. I respect you and everything, but the devil is a liar. Oh, 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 Mr. Jones, I checked that, uh, that biopsy. It shows uh, a, a, a cancer. Oh, the devil is a liar. It's what you ought to say. I'm the healed of the Lord. You ought to say, because whose report would you believe? That's what the songwriter said. God said, you are the healed of the Lord. Here comes the doctor. 
Because sometimes that will use the doctor, you know. <laughs> you use anybody he can use to get to you. Gives you a false report. The question is, whose report will you believe? And what you believe is evidenced by what you say. So if you choose the path of failure by believing the report of the doctor and say, I am diabetic. You know what the, your blood sugar, your, 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 your blood sugar just responds to that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because it's a known fact. Uh, high blood pressure is episodic. It comes up and down depending on whatever. So maybe they're just checking one time it was high. But then you say, I am hypertensive. I have high blood pressure. Your blood pressure will just hear the thing. And just, just stays high. <laughs> the thing was supposed to come down. Uh -huh. It's not the doctor's fault. It's not the devil's fault. It's your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? The Bible says... We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And this is what I preached a message once. It's another kingdom. Tell somebody it's another kingdom. In order for you to succeed in another kingdom, you cannot bring the ways and the means of the kingdom that you knew into this new kingdom. You can't do that. And the challenge for many of us is that because we were coming, all of us were coming from the kingdom of darkness, we are now in God's kingdom, but we are using ways and means of the kingdom where we're at. And even though that may have worked over there, it will not work over here because this is a new kingdom. I live in a country in St. Kitts, in St. Kitts and Nevis, in the West Indies. You don't pay taxes. What you earn, you keep. I love that system. Bahamas too? Praise the Lord. I think I'm taking the next flight to the Bahamas. If you come to the United States and you don't pay Uncle Sam, you will spend more years in jail than a second, than a second degree murder. Yeah, in this country, you get more years for tax evasion than for second degree murder. Sounds crazy, but that's the truth. Because you cannot bring the rules and the ways and the means of the kingdom where you are, of, of that kingdom. You cannot bring it here if you want to succeed here. So it is with the kingdom of God. So you have to learn the ways of the kingdom. You have to learn how to maneuver in this kingdom. And yes, you have to learn how to speak in this kingdom. You cannot speak the way you used to speak if you're going to experience success in this new kingdom. Tell somebody it's another kingdom. 